The Rigveda, Sanskrit Raveda Raveda, from Ark praise and Veda knowledge, is an ancient Indian collection of Vedic Sanskrit hymns along with associated commentaries on liturgy, ritual, and mystical exegesis. It is one of the four sacred canonical texts of Hinduism known as the Vedas. The core text, known as the Rigveda Samhita, is a collection of 1,028 hymns in about 10,600 verses called Ark, eponymous of the name Rigveda, organized into ten books. Mandalas. In the eight books that were composed the earliest, the hymns are mostly praise of specific deities. The younger books, books 1 and 10, in part also deal with philosophical or speculative questions, with the virtue of dana charity in society and with other metaphysical issues in their hymns. The oldest layers of the Rigveda Samhita are among the oldest extant texts in any Indo-European language, perhaps of similar age as certain Hittite texts. Philological and linguistic evidence indicates that the bulk of the Rigveda Samhita was composed in the northwestern region of the Indian subcontinent, most likely between c. 1500 and 1200 BC, although a wider approximation of c. 1700 to 1100 BC has also been given. The initial codification of the Rigveda took place during the early Kuru Kingdom c. 1200 to 900 BC. Some of its verses continue to be recited during Hindu rites of passage celebrations such as weddings and prayers, making it probably the world's oldest religious text in continued use. The associated material has been preserved from two shakas or schools known as Sakalya and Baskala. The school-specific commentaries are known as Brahmanas Aitareya Brahmana and Kaushataki Brahmana Aranyakas Aitareya Aranyaka and Kaushataki Aranyaka and Upanishads partly excerpted from the Aranyakas, Bhaocha Brahmana Upanishad, Aitareya Upanishad, Samhita Upanishad, Kaushataki Upanishad. Text Topic Organization Topic Mandalas The text is organized in ten books or mandalas circles of varying age and length. The text clearly originates as oral literature, and books may be a misleading term. The individual mandalas are, much rather, standalone collections of hymns that were intended to be memorized by the members of various groups of priests. This is particularly true of the family books, mandalas 2-7, which form the oldest part of the Rigveda and account for 38% of the entire text. They are called family books, because each of them is attributed to an individual rishi and was transmitted within the lineage of this rishi's family, or of his students. The hymns within each of the family books are arranged in collections each dealing with a particular deity. Agni comes first, Indra comes second, and so on. They are generally arranged by decreasing number of hymns within each section. Within each such collection, the hymns are arranged in descending order of the number of stanzas per hymn. If two hymns in the same collection have equal numbers of stanzas then they are arranged so that the number of syllables in the meter are in descending order. The second to seventh mandalas have a uniform format, the eighth and ninth mandalas, comprising hymns of mixed age, account for 15% and 9%, respectively. The ninth mandala is entirely dedicated to Soma and the Soma ritual. The hymns in the ninth mandala are arranged by both their prosody structure and by their length. The first and the tenth mandalas are the youngest, they are also the longest books, of 191 suktish each, accounting for 37% of the text. Nevertheless, some of the hymns in Mandalas 8, 1 and 10 May still belong to an earlier period and may be as old as the material in the family books. The first mandala has a unique arrangement not found in the other nine mandalas. The first 84 hymns of the 10th mandala have a structure different than the remaining hymns in it. Topic. Prosody Each mandala consists of hymns or suktish su plus ukta, literally, well recited, eulogy, intended for various rituals. The suktish in turn consist of individual stanzas called ark, praise, place, arsies, which are further analyzed into units of verse called pada, foot, or step. The meters most used in the RCAs are the Gayatri, three verses of eight syllables, Anushtav, four by eight, Trishtav, four by eleven, and Jagati, four by twelve. 
The Trishtav meter and Gayatri meter dominate in the Rigveda. For pedagogical convenience, each mandala is divided into roughly equal sections of several suktish, called anuvaka recitation", which modern publishers often omit. Another scheme divides the entire text over the ten mandalas into astaka eighth", ajaya chapter", and varga class". Some publishers give both classifications in a single edition. The most common numbering scheme is by book, hymn and stanza and pa a, b, c. If required, e.g., the first verse is in three times eight syllables 1.1.1a Agnam la Purohitam 1b Yajnasya Devam Ertvijam 1c Hotram Ratna dh Tamam Agni I invoke, the house priest, the god, minister of sacrifice, the presiding priest, bestower of wealth. Composers Tradition associates a rishi the composer with each arc of the Rigveda. Most suktish are attributed to single composers. The family books two to seven are so called because they have hymns by members of the same clan in each book, but other clans are also represented in the Rigveda. In all, ten families of rishis account for more than 95% of the arsis. For each of them, the Rigveda includes a lineage-specific aprihim, a special sukta of rigidly formulaic structure used for rituals. Topic. Transmission The original text as authored by the rishis, is close to but not identical to the extant Samhitapatha, but metrical and other observations allow reconstruction in part at least, of the original text from the extant one, as printed in the Harvard Oriental Series, Volume 50 1994. .The surviving form of the Rigveda is based on an early Iron Age collection that established the core family books Mandalas 2–7, ordered by author, deity and meter and a later redaction, co-aval with the redaction of the other Vedas, dating several centuries after the hymns were composed. This redaction also included some additions contradicting the strict ordering scheme and orthoepic changes to the Vedic Sanskrit such as the regularization of Sandhi termed orthoepicture diasquies by Oldenburg, 1888. As with the other Vedas, the redacted text has been handed down in several versions, most importantly the Padapatha, in which each word is isolated in pausa form and is used for just one way of memorization, and the Samhitapatha, which combines words according to the rules of Sandhi the process being described in the Pratisakya and is the memorized text used for recitation. The Padapatha and the Pratisakya anchor the text's true meaning, and the fixed text was preserved with unparalleled fidelity for more than a millennium by oral tradition alone. In order to achieve this the oral tradition prescribed very structured enunciation, involving breaking down the Sanskrit compounds into stems and inflections, as well as certain permutations. This interplay with sounds gave rise to a scholarly tradition of morphology and phonetics. The Rigveda was probably not written down until the Gupta period 4th to 6th centuries AD, by which time the Brahmi script had become widespread the oldest surviving manuscripts are from AD 1040, discovered in Nepal. The oral tradition still continued into recent times. There is a widely accepted time frame for the initial codification of the Rigveda by compiling the hymns very late in the Rigvedic or rather in the early post-Rigvedic period, including the arrangement of the individual hymns in ten books, coeval with the composition of the younger Veda Samhitas. This time coincides with the early Kuru kingdom, shifting the center of Vedic culture east from the Punjab into what is now Uttar Pradesh. The fixing of the Samhitapatha by enforcing regular application of Sandhi and of the Padapatha by dissolving Sandhi out of the earlier metrical text, occurred during the later Brahmana period, in roughly the 6th century BC. Recensions Several shakas branches, I, e., recensions of Rig Veda are known to have existed in the past. Of these, Sakalya is the only one to have survived in its entirety. Another shaka that may have survived is the Baskala, although this is uncertain. The surviving Padapatha version of the Rigveda text is ascribed to Sakalya. The Sakala recension has 1,017 regular hymns, and an appendix of 11 Valukulya hymns, which are now customarily included in the 8th mandala, as 8.49 to 8.59, for a total of 1028 hymns. The Baskala recension includes eight of these Valukulya hymns among its regular hymns, making a total of 1025 regular hymns for this sakha. 
In addition, the Baskala recension has its own appendix of 98 hymns, the Kalani. In the 1877 edition of Orvrecht, the 1028 hymns of the Rigveda contain a total of 10,552 arsis, or 39,831 padas. The Shatapatha Brahmana gives the number of syllables to be 432,000, while the metrical text of Van Norton and Holland 1994 has a total of 395,563 syllables or an average of 9.93 syllables per pada. Counting the number of syllables is not straightforward because of issues with Sandhi and the post-Rigvedic pronunciation of syllables like Suva as Sver. Three other shakas are mentioned in Karanavuha, a parasista supplement of Yajurveda, Mandukyana, Asvalyana and Sankhayana. The Atharvaveda lists two more shakas. The differences between all these shakas are very minor, limited to varying order of content and inclusion or non-inclusion of a few verses. The following information is known about the shakas other than Sakalya and Baskala. Mandukyana, perhaps the oldest of the Rigvedic shakas. Asvalyana, includes 212 verses, all of which are newer than the other Rigvedic hymns. Sankhayana, very similar to Asvalyana Caesarea, mentioned in the Rigveda Pratisakya. Very similar to Sakala, with a few additional verses, might have derived from or merged with it. Manuscripts <inaudible> 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 Writing appears in India around the 3rd century BC in the form of the Brahmi script, but texts of the length of the Rigveda were likely not written down until much later, and the oldest extant manuscripts date to AD 1040, discovered in Nepal. While written manuscripts were used for teaching in medieval times, they were written on birch bark or palm leaves, which decompose and therefore were routinely copied over the generations to help preserve the text. Some Rigveda commentaries may date from the second half of the first millennium AD. The hymns were thus composed and preserved by oral tradition for several millennia from the time of their composition until the redaction of the Rigveda, and the entire Rigveda was preserved in shakas for another 2,500 years from the time of its redaction until the editio princeps by Rosen, Orvrecht and Max Müller. Versions <inaudible> 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 There are, for example, 30 manuscripts of Rigveda at the Bandaka Oriental Research Institute, collected in the 19th century by Georg Buller, Franz Kyelhorn and others, originating from different parts of India, including Kashmir, Gujarat, the then Rajaputana, central provinces etc. They were transferred to Deccan College, Pune, in the late 19th century. They are in the Sharada and Devanagari scripts, written on birch bark and paper. The oldest of them is dated to 1464. The 30 manuscripts of Rigveda preserved at the Bandaka Oriental Research Institute, Pune were added to UNESCO's Memory of the World Register in 2007. Of these 30 manuscripts, 9 contain the Samhita text, 5 have the Padapatha in addition. 13 contain Sayana's commentary. At least 5 manuscripts Ms. Number 1, A1879-80, 1, A1881-82, 331 1883-84 and 5, Vis I have preserved the complete text of the Rigveda. MS No 5 1875-76, written on birch bark in bold Sharada, was only in part used by Max Muller for his edition of the Rigveda with Sayana's commentary. Muller used 24 manuscripts then available to him in Europe, while the Pune edition used over five dozen manuscripts, but the editors of Pune edition could not procure many manuscripts used by Muller and by the Bombay edition, as well as from some other sources, hence the total number of extant manuscripts known then must surpass perhaps 80 at least. Topic. Comparison The various Rigveda manuscripts discovered so far show some differences. Broadly, the most studied Sakala recension has 1017 hymns, includes an appendix of 11 Valukulya hymns which are often counted with the 8th mandala, for a total of 1,028 metrical hymns. The Basakala version of Rigveda includes eight of these Valukulya hymns among its regular hymns, making a total of 1025 hymns in the main text for this Sakha. The Basakala text also has an appendix of 98 hymns, called the Kalani, bringing the total to 1,123 hymns. The manuscripts of Sakala recension of the Rigveda have about 10,600 verses, organized into ten books mandalas. 
Books 2 through 7 are internally homogeneous in style, while books 1, 8 and 10 are compilation of verses of internally different styles suggesting that these books are likely a collection of compositions by many authors. The first mandala is the largest, with 191 hymns and 2006 verses, and it was added to the text after books 2 through 9. The last, or the tenth book, also has 191 hymns but 1,754 verses, making it the second largest. The language analytics suggest the tenth book, chronologically, was composed and added last. The content of the tenth book also suggests that the authors knew and relied on the contents of the first nine books. The Rigveda is the largest of the four Vedas, and many of its verses appear in the other Vedas. Almost all of the 1,875 verses found in Samaveda are taken from different parts of the Rigveda, either once or as repetition, and rewritten in a chant song form. The books 8 and 9 of the Rigveda are by far the largest source of verses for Samaveda. The book 10 contributes the largest number of the 1,350 verses of Rigveda found in Atharvaveda, or about one-fifth of the 5,987 verses in the Atharvaveda text. A bulk of 1,875 ritual-focused verses of Yajurveda, in its numerous versions, also borrow and build upon the foundation of verses in Rigveda. Topic: <laughs> Contents. Altogether, the Rigveda consists of the Samhita, hymns to the deities, the oldest part of the Rigveda, the Brahmanas, commentaries on the hymns. The Aranyakas or forest books. The Upanishads and Western usage, Rigveda, usually refers to the Rigveda Samhita, while the Brahmanas are referred to as the Rigveda Brahmanas, etc. Technically speaking, however, the Rigveda refers to the entire body of texts transmitted along with the Samhita portion. Different bodies of commentary were transmitted in the different shakas or schools. Only a small portion of these texts has been preserved. The texts of only two out of five shakas mentioned by the Rigveda Pratishakya have survived. The late 15th or 16th century Sri Guru Charitra even claims the existence of twelve Rigvedic shakas. The two surviving Rigvedic corpora are those of the Sakala and the Baskala shakas. Hymns <laughs> 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 The Rigvedic hymns are dedicated to various deities, chief of whom are Indra, a heroic god praised for having slain his enemy Vrtra, Agni, the sacrificial fire, and Soma, the sacred potion or the plant it is made from. Equally prominent gods are the Adityas or Asura gods Mitra Varuna and Ushas the dawn. Also invoked are Savita, Vishnu, Rudra, Pushan, Brihaspati or Brahmanaspati, as well as deified natural phenomena such as Dyaspita, the shining sky, Father Heaven, Prithivi, the earth, Mother Earth, Surya, the sun god, Vayu or Vata, the wind, Apis, the waters, Parjanya, the thunder and rain, Vac, the word, many rivers, notably the Sapta Sindhu and the Sarasvati River. The Adityas, Vasas, Rudras, Sadyas, Ashvans, Maruts, Rbhus and the Vishvadevas, all gods as well as the 33 gods other groups of deities mentioned mandala 1 comprises 191 hymns hymn 1.1 is addressed to agni and his name is the first word of the rigveda the remaining hymns are mainly addressed to agni and indra as well as varuna mitra the ashvans the maruts usas surya rbhus rudra vayu braspati vishnu heaven and earth and all the gods this mandala is dated to have been added to Rigveda after Mandala 2 through 9, and includes the philosophical riddle hymn 1.164, which inspires chapters in later Upanishads such as the Mundaka. Mandala 2 comprises 43 hymns, mainly to Agni and Indra. It is chiefly attributed to the Rishi Gertsamata Sornahotra. Mandala 3 comprises 62 hymns, mainly to Agni and Indra and the Vishvadevas. The verse 3.62.10 has great importance in Hinduism as the Gayatri Mantra. Most hymns in this book are attributed to Visvamitra Gathina. Mandala 4 comprises 58 hymns, mainly to Agni and Indra as well as the Rbhus, Ashvans, Braspati, Vayu, Usas, etc. Most hymns in this book are attributed to Vamadeva Gautama. Mandala 5 comprises 87 hymns, mainly to Agni and Indra, the Visvedevas, all the gods, the Maruts, the twin deity Mitra Varuna and the Asvins. Two hymns each are dedicated to Ushas the dawn, and to Savita. 
Most hymns in this book are attributed to the Atri clan. Mandala 6 comprises 75 hymns, mainly to Agni and Indra, all the gods, Pusan, Ashvin, Usas, etc. Most hymns in this book are attributed to the Bahaspatya family of Angarazas. Mandala 7 comprises 104 hymns, to Agni, Indra, the Visvadevas, the Maruts, Mitra Varuna, the Asvins, Ushas, Indra Varuna, Varuna, Vayu the wind, to each to Sarasvati ancient river, goddess of learning, and Vishnu, and to others. Most hymns in this book are attributed to Vasistha Maitavaruni. Mandala 8 comprises 103 hymns to various gods. Hymns 8.49 to 8.59 are the apocryphal Valukilya. Hymns 1 to 48 and 60 to 66 are attributed to the Kanva clan, the rest to other Angarasa poets. Mandala 9 comprises 114 hymns, entirely devoted to Soma Pavamana, the cleansing of the sacred potion of the Vedic religion. Mandala 10 comprises additional 191 hymns, frequently in later language, addressed to Agni, Indra and various other deities. It contains the Nadastuti Sukta which is in praise of rivers and is important for the reconstruction of the geography of the Vedic civilization and the Purusha Sukta which has been important in studies of Vedic sociology. It also contains the Nasadiya Sukta which deals with multiple speculations about the creation of universe, and whether anyone can know the right answer. The marriage hymns and the death hymns still are of great importance in the performance of the corresponding GRHYA rituals. Rigveda Brahmanas Are the Brahmanas that were handed down in the schools of the Bhārakas i.e., possessed of many verses as the followers of the Rigveda are called, two have come down to us, namely those of the Itarayan and the Kaushatakans. The Itaraya Brahmana and the Kaushataki or Sankhayana Brahmana evidently have for their groundwork the same stock of traditional exegetic matter. They differ, however, considerably as regards both the arrangement of this matter and their stylistic handling of it, with the exception of the numerous legends common to both, in which the discrepancy is comparatively slight. There is also a certain amount of material peculiar to each of them. The Kaushataka is, upon the whole, far more concise in its style and more systematic in its arrangement features which would lead one to infer that it is probably the more modern work of the two. It consists of 30 chapters Ajaya, while the Itaraya has 40, divided into 8 books or pentads, pankaka, of 5 chapters each. The last 10 Ajayas of the latter work are, however, clearly a later edition though they must have already formed part of it at the time of Panini c. 5th century BC, if, as seems probable, one of his grammatical sutras, regulating the formation of the names of Brahmanas, consisting of thirty and forty ajayas, refers to these two works. In this last portion occurs the well-known legend also found in the Shankhayana Sutra, but not in the Kaushataki Brahmana of Shunashipa, whom his father Ajagata sells and offers to slay, the recital of which formed part of the inauguration of kings, while the Itaraya deals almost exclusively with the Soma sacrifice, the Kaushataka, in its first six chapters, treats of the several kinds of Havariyajna, or offerings of rice, milk, ghee, etc., whereupon follows the Soma sacrifice in this way, that chapters 7-10 contain the practical ceremonial and eleven. 7 to 30 the recitations Shastra of the Hotar. Sayana, in the introduction to his commentary on the work, ascribes the Itaraya to the sage Mahadasa Itaraya i.e. son of Atara, also mentioned elsewhere as a philosopher, and it seems likely enough that this person arranged the Brahmana and founded the school of the Itarayan. Regarding the authorship of the sister work we have no information, except that the opinion of the sage Kaushataki is frequently referred to in it as authoritative, and generally in opposition to the Panya the Brahmana, it would seem, of a rival school, the Pangans. Probably, therefore, it is just what one of the manuscripts calls it. The Brahmana of Sankhayana, composed, in accordance with the views of Kaushataki. <inaudible> Rigveda Aranyakas and Upanishads Each of these two Brahmanas is supplemented by a forest book, or Aranyaka. The Aranyaka is not a uniform production. It consists of five books Aranyaka, three of which, the first and the last two, are of a liturgical nature, treating of the ceremony called Mahavrata, or Great Vow. The last of these books, composed in sutra form, is, however, doubtless of later origin, and is, indeed, ascribed by Hindu authorities either to Shaunika or to Ashvalyana. 
The second and third books, on the other hand, are purely speculative, and are also styled the Bharocha Brahmana Upanishad. Again, the last four chapters of the second book are usually singled out as the Itareya Upanishad, ascribed, like its Brahmana and the first book, to Mahadasa Itareya, and the third book is also referred to as the Samhita Upanishad. As regards the Kaushataki Aranyaka, this work consists of fifteen ajayas, the first two treating of the Mahavrata ceremony and the seventh and eighth of which correspond to the first, fifth, and third books of the Itareya Aranyaka, respectively, whilst the four ajayas usually inserted between them constitute the highly interesting Kaushataki Upanishad, of which we possess two different recensions. The remaining portions 9 to 15 of the Aranyaka treat of the vital heirs, the internal Agnihort, etc., ending with the Vamsha, or succession of teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Dating and historical context The Vedic Sanskrit text of the redacted version of the Rig Veda was transmitted remarkably unchanged, preserving, apart from certain prosodic changes the systematic application of Sandhi rules the linguistic stage of the Late Bronze Age. Because of the faithful preservation of the text, the language was no longer immediately understandable to scholars of classical Sanskrit by about 500 BC, necessitating commentaries interpreting the meaning of the text of the hymns. The Brahmanas contain numerous misinterpretations, due to this linguistic change, some of which were characterized by Sra Aurobindo as grotesque nonsense. The earliest texts were composed in Greater Punjab, Northwest India and Pakistan, and the more philosophical later texts were most likely composed in or around the region that is the modern era state of Haryana. Philological estimates tend to date the bulk of the text to the second half of the second millennium, being composed in an early Indo-Aryan language. The hymns must post-date the Indo-Iranian separation, dated to roughly 2000 BC. A reasonable date close to that of the composition of the core of the Rig Veda is that of the Mitanni documents of C. 1400 BC, which contain Indo-Aryan nomenclature. Other evidence also points to a composition close to 1400 BC the Rigveda's core is accepted to date to the Late Bronze Age, making it one of the few examples with an unbroken tradition. Its composition is usually dated to roughly between c. 1500 to 1200 BC the Rigveda is far more archaic than any other Indo-Aryan text. For this reason, it was in the center of attention of Western scholarship from the times of Max Müller and Rudolf Roth onwards. The Rig Veda records an early stage of Vedic religion. There are strong linguistic and cultural similarities with the early Iranian Avesta, deriving from the Proto-Indo-Iranian times, often associated with the early Andronovo culture or rather, the Sintushta culture within the early Andronovo horizon of c. 2000 BC The Rig Veda offers no direct evidence of social or political system in Vedic era, whether ordinary or elite. Only hints such as cattle raising and horse racing are discernible, and the text offers very general ideas about the ancient Indian society. There is no evidence, state Jameson and Breton, of any elaborate, pervasive or structured caste system. Social stratification seems embryonic, then and later a social ideal rather than a social reality. The society was pastoral with evidence of agriculture since hymns mention plough and celebrate agricultural divinities. There was division of labor, and complementary relationship between kings and poet-priests but no discussion of relative status of social classes. Women in Rigveda appear disproportionately as speakers in dialogue hymns, both as mythical or divine Indrani, Upsaras Urvashi, or Yami, as well as Apala Atreyi RV Gotta RV Gosa Kaksavati RV Ramasa RV Lopamudra RV Visvavara Atreyi RV Sachi Paulomi RV Sasvati Angarasi RV the women of Rigveda are quite outspoken and appear more sexually confident than men, in the text. Elaborate and aesthetic hymns on wedding suggest rites of passage had developed during the Rigvedic period. There is little evidence of dowry and no evidence of sati in it or related Vedic texts. The Rigvedic hymns mention rice and porridge, in hymns such as 8.83, 8.70, 8.77, and 1.61 in some versions of the text, however, there is no discussion of rice cultivation. The term ayas metal occurs in the Rig Veda, but it is unclear which metal it was. Iron is not mentioned in Rig Veda, something scholars have used to help date Rig Veda to have been composed before 1000 BC. Hymn 5.63 mentions, "...metal cloaked in gold", 
suggesting metalworking had progressed in the Vedic culture. Some of the names of gods and goddesses found in the Rigveda are found amongst other belief systems based on Proto Indo European religion, while words used share common roots with words from other Indo European languages. The horse, Ashva, cattle, sheep, and goat play an important role in the Rigveda. There are also references to the elephant Hastin, Varana, Camel Ustra, especially in Mandala 8, Ars Kara, Rasava, Buffalo Mahisa, Wolf, Hyena, Lion Simha, Mountain Goat Saraba, and to the Gaur in the Rigveda. The Peafowl Mayura, the Goose Hamsa, and the Chakravaka Tadorna Ferruginia, are some birds mentioned in the Rigveda. Reception in Hinduism Topic. Shruti The Vedas as a whole are classed as Shruti in Hindu tradition. This has been compared to the concept of divine revelation in Western religious tradition. But Stahl argues that, it is nowhere stated that the Veda was revealed, and that Shruti simply means, that what is heard, in the sense that it is transmitted from father to son or from teacher to pupil. The Rigveya, or other Vedas, do not anywhere assert that they are Aparusya, and this reverential term appears only centuries after the end of the Vedic period in the texts of the Mimamsa school of Hindu philosophy. The text of Rigveda suggests it was composed by poets, human individuals whose names were household words. In the Vedic age, states Stahl. Topic: <inaudible> Medieval Hindu scholarship. By the period of Puranic Hinduism, in the medieval period, the language of the hymns had become almost entirely unintelligible, and their interpretation mostly hinged on mystical ideas and sound symbolism. According to Hindu tradition, the Rigvedic hymns, along with the other Vedas, the Mahabharata, and the Puranas, were compiled by sage Vyasa. According to the Satipatha Brahmana, the number of syllables in the Rigveda is 432,000, but the surviving Rigveda does not confirm this number. The Rigveda does have embedded numerical patterns such as 10,800 stanzas, which corresponds to 30 times 360, and a fourth of 432 that appears in many Hindu contexts 108 Upanishads. The Shatapatha Brahmana claims that there are 10,800,000 stars in the sky. According to Thomas McEvilly, an art historian and academic who compared Greek and Indian literature, the numbers such as 432 and 108 may be of significance to the Hindus, but many numerology claims do not verify and the believer is left with the consolation of thinking that the missing are there, but unmanifest. The authors of the Brahmana literature discussed and interpreted the Vedic ritual. Yaska was an early commentator of the Rigveda by discussing the meanings of difficult words. In the 14th century, Sayana wrote an exhaustive commentary on it. A number of other commentaries bashes were written during the medieval period, including the commentaries by Skandasvaman, pre Sayana, roughly of the Gupta period, Ajitha, pre Sayana, Venkata Madhava, pre Sayana, c. 10th to 12th centuries, and Mudgala Purana, after Sayana, an abbreviated version of Sayana's commentary. Topic. Arya Samai and Aurobindo movements In the 19th and early 20th centuries, some reformers like Swami Dayananda Saraswati, founder of the Arya Samai, Sra Aurobindo, founder of Sra Aurobindo Ashram, discussed the Vedas, including the Rig Veda, for their philosophies. According to Robson, Dayanand believed, there were no errors in the Vedas, including the Rig Veda, and if anyone showed him an error, he would maintain that it was a corruption added later. Dayananda and Aurobindo interpret the Vedic scholars had a monotheistic conception. Aurobindo attempted to interpret hymns to Agni in the Rigveda as mystical. Aurobindo states that the Vedic hymns were a quest after a higher truth, define the RTA basis of Dharma, conceive life in terms of a struggle between the forces of light and darkness, and sought the ultimate reality. Topic: <laughs> Contemporary Hinduism. Rigveda, in contemporary Hinduism, has been a reminder of the ancient cultural heritage and point of pride for Hindus, with some hymns still in use in major rites of passage ceremonies, but the literal acceptance of most of the textual essence is long gone. Louis Renou wrote that the text is a distant object, and, even in the most orthodox domains, the reverence to the Vedas has come to be a simple raising of the hat. 
Musicians and dance groups celebrate the text as a mark of Hindu heritage, through incorporating Rigvedic hymns in their compositions, such as in Hamsadvani and Subhapanchuvarali of Carnatic music, and these have remained popular among the Hindus for decades. However, the contemporary Hindu beliefs are distant from the precepts in the ancient layer of Rigveda Samhitas. The social history and context of the Vedic texts are extremely distant from contemporary Hindu religious beliefs and practice. A reverence for the Vedas as an exemplar of Hindu heritage continues to inform a contemporary understanding of Hinduism. Popular reverence for Vedic scripture is similarly focused on the abiding authority and prestige of the Vedas rather than on any particular exegesis or engagement with the subject matter of the text. In contemporary Hindu nationalism, the Rigveda has also been adduced in the indigenous Aryans debate. See out of India theory. These theories are controversial. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Monism debate. While the older hymns of the Rigveda reflect sacrificial ritual typical of polytheism. Its younger parts, specifically mandalas 1 and 10, have been noted as containing monistic or henotheistic speculations. A widely cited example of such speculations is hymn 1.164.46. Max Muller notably introduced the term, henotheism, for the philosophy expressed here, avoiding the connotations of monotheism in Judeo-Christian tradition. Other widely cited examples of monistic tendencies include hymns 1.164, 8.36, and 10.31. Other scholars state that Rigveda includes an emerging diversity of thought, including monotheism, polytheism, henotheism, and pantheism, the choice left to the preference of the worshipper, and the Nasadiya Sukta, 10.129, one of the most widely cited Rigvedic hymns in popular Western presentations. Ruse 2015 commented on the old discussion of monotheism vs. Henotheism vs. Monism, by noting an atheistic streak in hymns such as 10.130, examples from Mandala 1 are used to illustrate the metaphysical nature of the contents of the younger hymns include 1.164.34. What is the ultimate limit of the earth? What is the center of the universe? What is the semen of the cosmic horse? What is the ultimate source of human speech? 1.164.34. Who gave blood, soul, spirit to the earth? How could the unstructured universe give origin to this structured world? 1.164.5. Where does the sun hide in the night? Where do gods live? 1.164.6. What, where is the unborn support for the born universe? 1.164.20 A hymn that is widely cited in the Upanishads as the parable of the body and the soul. Two birds with fair wings, inseparable companions, have found refuge in the same sheltering tree. One incessantly eats from the fig tree, the other, not eating, just looks on. Translations The first published translation of any portion of the Rigveda in any European language was into Latin, by Friedrich August Rosen Rigvedi Specimen, London 1830. Predating Muller's editio princeps of the text by 19 years, Rosen was working from manuscripts brought back from India by Colebrook. H. H. Wilson was the first to make a complete translation of the Rig Veda into English, published in six volumes during the period 1850–88. Wilson's version was based on the commentary of Sayana. Muller's Rig Veda Sanita in six volumes Muller, Max, ed. W. H. Allen & Co., London, 1849 has an English preface The birch bark from which Muller produced his translation is held at the Bandaka Oriental Research Institute, Pune, India. The Rig Veda is the earliest, the most venerable, obscure, distant and difficult for moderns to understand, hence is often misinterpreted or worse, used as a peg on which to hang an idea or a theory. Like all archaic texts, the Rigveda is difficult to translate into modern language. There are no closely contemporary extant texts, which makes it difficult to interpret. And early translations contain straightforward errors. Another issue is the choice of translation for technical terms such as mandala, conventionally translated book, but more literally rendered cycle. Some notable translations of the Rigveda include Topic. See also 
Kesson Mayaveda equals equals notes <laughs>